Hello creatives, Serena here. Thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel. Now, today I have a little bit different video because uh, it's not going to have a demo, I'm not going to do an art haul, but I've been here in my garden thinking about something and running it over my head uh, while I write my journal and reread my journal entry and something's been bothering me. So let's take a look at my journal entry which will probably make it clearer for you. I've been so in the mood to create art, particularly to work with gouache and acrylic mixed media. My work is so stifled and tight that I wish it could be looser, more spontaneous. I've been watching artist Sandy Hester who does these Gauguin like colorful paintings where she lays down blobs of color to represent things like a scribble of green for a tree. Uh, now even some comments are unkind that her work isn't real art but most of what she shows are marks, blobs of color as a reminder to herself of a vibrant color someone was wearing or the position of a boat so she can later incorporate it into a more refined painting which still is blob like sometimes but that's her style and it's wonderful she uses the best colors I, I don't know where she comes up with them but they're just like the best colors that she mixes she is not an out of the tube artist uh, she won't take paint right out of a tube she just takes her time and painstakingly mixes till she gets the right color and it's it, you can see it in her work anyway she says that most artists do bad art before they create good art. We just don't see the bad art phase. Um, it's not highlighted on Instagram. It's not what's hanging in the galleries, but it's the, in the background just the same. Now, largely because she has a studio, Sandy is free to play with color and materials and see what comes of it, what results she gets painting with a stick or using her non-dominant hand. The result is a looser painting. And I made a note that she loves a frayed hog bristle oil painter's brush to lay down gouache. She just made a point of that. Okay, and then most of the work she shares from her sketchbook is not finished, but you see bits and pieces of it carried over into her paintings. There are studies, impressions, yet, as she says, marks on paper. And boy, does she work big. Her sketchbook opened must be 16 by 20. It is huge. Now, there is something to thinking about it as marks on paper. It's so freeing. Isn't that what a child does when they first pick up a crayon or a brush? Now, I remember in kindergarten getting the coveted space at the easel when the teacher fortunately was occupied with the other children and not watching me didn't notice when I was lost in running my brush slowly up and down the entire page, overlapping the edges and painting onto the easel itself. Now, not to be mischievous, but to ensure every inch of paper was covered and there was no border left on the page. I can still see that ultramarine blue color and I remember the thickness of the paint and the brush strokes it left initially on the paper before it melted then dried flat. I was mesmerized by the thick feel of the paint and how that public school pulp paper grabbed it. I was probably three quarters finished covering the page when the teacher finally came over and scolded me for not making a painting. But I was painting. I was in the moment. I, I was more present laying paper paint on that paper than probably any kid using that easel since. And probably that's true. You know, that was the childlike exploration that I need to recapture and re-experience. Nobody initially told me I was doing it wrong or told me what to do. So I began with the first intuitive step, to feel and experience my materials. I became lost in the feel and smell of the paint and the wonder of eliminating the white of the page without even being aware of being watched. Now, I think that holds me back also. I'm conscious of people walking by, seeing what I'm doing, judging me for not making a masterpiece, for not painting a picture, 
and more than that, for wasting my supplies. Well, what if I cover my entire $2 a sheet arches paper using some of my precious $100 professional watercolor paint, which I saved so long to get? Um, you know, I worked for it. I paid for it. It's mine to use, and maybe I need to cover the whole page in a single color to see how it reacts. I want permission to do that, and I need privacy to accomplish it. My own space, my own studio. You know, tell me if you feel the same way, that you sometimes feel stifled, or you don't like painting in front of people, or even in, you know, your own little studio, if you have a room or a, a section of your house and people walk by. Are you like self-conscious? Do you kind of hide it a little bit? Give me a comment below and tell me. I, I'd really like to know. Now, I have a little bit more to read and now we're re getting into the nitty-gritty of it. As I look outside and see the brown lilac blooms of May still on the bush, the vibrant fleeting show of Van Gogh iris have come and gone, and even just this week the last bloom of my favorite deep cadmium yellow daylily has withered and dropped, leaving their strong green stems with nothing left to support. The fresh blooms of July are looking overgrown and unkempt, struggling to keep up their summer glory through the ravages of August's unforgiving heat. The corn has tasseled and most sunflowers have opened, signaling their urgency to produce seeds. No longer is there unlimited time, the long lazy days of midsummer that seem to go on forever. As the harvest comes in little by little, first the lettuce, then the beets and carrots, and soon the potatoes and winter squash, nature tells us that the time for growth will soon be over. The time to reproduce and produce has a limit, and that end is coming. We don't know when. We're never given a set date every year when frost will hit, when all is over, when it's too late. And so it is with all creation, including art. We don't know if our eyes will fail, This section hits a little too close and I had to refilm it. We don't know if our eyes will fail or our hands will start to shake. We don't know when our first frost will come. So we have to use our time now while we have it. Our long lazy days of summer that remain for us surely knowingly limited. The question is how will we use our last lazy days of summer? And this brings me to the point. Now, I have done a review uh, in a past video of Danny Gregory's The Creative License, which is a great book. I, I love it, and it's kind of worn. Um, I've used it to death, which is good, which is probably what he's intended for it. But he put out a video on decrepitude, and it's kind of a little depressing video. Uh, I don't think he meant it that way, but you know, if you're getting on in years or you may have some limitations coming up, you kind of can relate. And basically, he gave you a formula to figure out how long you have left. It's a it's an, a general thing. It's not, you know, exact science, and it wasn't meant to be depressing. I'm sure, but. It gives you an idea and impresses upon you how our time is limited, how we don't have forever to create art. So, you know, your hand may start shaking. You may start having vision problems. You know, use your time right now. Do what you can now. Use those art supplies. Don't let them sit in the closet. You know, if you bought art supplies, I'm guilty of this too. Leave me a comment down below if you are. You have supplies in the closet that you didn't even open, you didn't even try. Open them up and try them. My issue, though, is that I don't have a space. This is why you may not have seen me putting out very many YouTube videos. Um, I can't work very large anymore. I used to have a coffee table that I worked on, but it was 
too, too big for the space in the living room. By mutual agreement, it went outside. It, it really had to. We were bumping our knees on it. It just had to go. So now I don't even have a table to work on. And I'll show you what I'm actually doing my work on. Okay, so here's my current setup. The table's gone, and this is on the footrest of the love seat. So I've got my palette on the one side, and my work on the other side, which you see is not very big. That's probably less than an 8x10. Uh, so I can't work very big. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like I'm whining because there are bigger problems in the world than this. But it's gotten to the point where I, I just can't enjoy myself anymore doing this. Uh, we live in an open plan a house because we heat with wood, which means that the, there are virtually no walls or few walls in the house. So I hear the television on constantly. Uh, people are walking back and forth and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I, I think we are here on Earth to experience things and to live life at its fullest. And as long as I can paint, I will, but I really need a space to paint. I need a quiet space. I need a space where I can spread out, because this is not a solution. And I've come to the conclusion that since I don't have a closet I can use, I don't have like a corner that I can put my own desk or even put walls up, I am going to build a studio. I'm going to have to build a studio separate from the house. That's all there is to it. I'm going to work and save for it, and I am going to do it. So leave me your comments on what you think about that. Uh, do you think I'm getting in over my head, or... Is it stupid to build a studio? I mean, I want to build the studio not only for art, but also so that I have a quiet place to read because the television's on very often. And uh, especially going through winter months, I do need a place for that. And I need a place to do yoga or stretching because I just haven't done a lot of that. And now I'm doing it on my kitchen floor and people are walking over me to get to the bathroom. So that's really not the way to do yoga. <laughs> As you know, if you, if you do it yourself, it should be a peaceful, calming thing that you concentrate on. So, what do you think of my crazy plan? Let me know in the comments below. I don't even know where I'm going to put it. But if you think I'm on the right track, give me a like subscribe. It really helps when you hit that subscribe button. And I will see you as soon as I can.